All right, so we have had our lesson on empirical formulas, and now we are going to follow up with the lesson on molecular formulas. This is actually even easier than empirical, which is good news because empirical was not hard once you get used to it. So when we talk about molecular formulas, I want you to think multiple. Think molecular, and the next word I want popping in your brain is multiple um, because a molecular formula is simply a multiple of the empirical formula. And remember, the empirical formula is the simplest formula. For example, let's consider CH2. That is an empirical formula because the carbon, there's one of those, and the hydrogen, there are two of those. That cannot be reduced anymore. That one-two ratio is as small as you can reduce that. Therefore, it's an empirical formula. But if we have a multiple of that, that's going to be considered the molecular formula. So I've used three examples of the empirical formula CH2, and I've just shown you how you can multiply by a multiple of 2, 3, or 4 and get the molecular formula. So if your multiple is 2, if you multiply 2 here and here, you're going to get C2H4. If the multiple is 3, you're going to multiply the 3 by this 1, and by this 2, and you're going to get C3H6. If your multiple is 4, you would multiply that 4 here and here, and you're going to get C4H8. So what I want you to notice here is all of the molecular formula subscripts could actually be reduced to give you this empirical formula. Now, what I'm going to teach you to find today is this multiple this number right here. So I'll scoop this up so you can see this little section all at once, and I think this is a great part um, of your notes. It's, it kind of just puts everything together. So today, the empirical formula is going to be given to you. This is what you learned to find in the empirical formula lesson. Today we're giving you the empirical formula. We are going to give you something called the molecular molar mass. Sometimes that is called the experimental molar mass. When you see it in the problem, you'll recognize it very quickly. You're going to use that to find the multiple, and then you're going to take that multiple, and you're going to multiply it by the subscripts in your empirical formula to get your molecular formula. So we're going to give you this. You're going to find this and use this to find this, and it's really very easy. Now, just another way to look at all of that information I just gave you, um, we'll consider benzene. Benzene has an empirical formula of CH, and what that means is in a benzene molecule, the ratio of carbons to hydrogens is a one-to-one. -one. So that means carbon and hydrogen have a one-to-one -one ratio. However, the molecular formula for benzene is actually C6H6. The molecular formula tells you in that benzene molecule that you actually have six carbons and six hydrogens. So here's another way of looking at what we just talked about. It's still a one-to-one -one ratio because you could break that down and you know six to six is the same as one-to-one -one when you're looking at it proportionally. So the molecular formula tells us exactly how many of each atom you have in a certain compound, whereas the empirical formula represents the simplest ratio of the elements in the compound. So that's a really good way to look at the difference. Again, the empirical formula tells us the ratio of elements in the compound, and the molecular formula tells us exactly how many of each atom are in the compound. And the molecular formula is what I'm going to teach you to solve for today. So now we're ready to do some examples. We won't have to do many of these because, again, they're really easy. So go ahead and write this first one down. A compound has an empirical formula of CN2. Calculate the molecular formula when given a molecular molar mass of 40.03. And again, that could have also said experimental molar mass. But what you're noticing here that makes these problems different than the ones you did in the last lesson is that we're actually giving you this empirical formula. 
We're just saying here it is. You don't even have to find it. And here is the mass of our sample. So we're ready to jump in. The first thing we want to do is take this empirical formula and we want to find the mass of it. So we have carbon and nitrogen. We have one carbon and two nitrogens. Carbon is 12.01 grams per mole. Nitrogen is 14.01 grams per mole. So that's going to be 12.01 plus 28.02. We add those together. So we've got 28.02 plus 12.01. The mass is 40.03. Grams per mole. So what we have done here is we have found the molar mass of the empirical formula. That's what this is. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we are going to take the experimental molar mass that was given to us in the problem. That's that 40.03 grams per mole. And we are going to divide that by the mass of the empirical formula. And in this case, since they're the same number, and listen, realistically, this happens all the time, we're, we're going to make some notes on where these numbers came from because that could be a little confusing if you were just looking at the notes. So this 40.03, that's what they gave us in the problem. This 40.03 on the bottom is actually the mass of the empirical formula that we just found. Now, I know that's a lot of writing for something that's just really going to equal 1. So when we divide 40.03 by 40.03, we get the number 1. This 1 is what we're looking for because this 1 is our multiple. And we are going to multiply this by the subscripts in the empirical formula that they gave us. So we'll make another note. This is the multiple, or the number, we will multiply by all of the subscripts in the empirical formula. So basically, here's what you're doing, and it's, you know, all of this writing probably made this look a lot more complicated than it is, but you need the details because we're not always going to have a one here, and we'll see some other examples of that. So you're going to take this one, and where our empirical formula was C in two, you are going to multiply this one here, and you're going to multiply it here. And that gives us the molecular formula, which also happens to be CN2. So CN2 is also the molecular formula. Now, is it always like this? No. Is it sometimes? Yes. 
So occasionally, the empirical and the molecular formulas will be the same. Now next, we're going to look at an example where they are not the same. All right. A compound has an empirical formula of P2O5. Calculate the molecular formula if you're given a mo molecular molar mass of 283.88 grams per mole. So once again, let's look at what the problem gave us. They're saying, hey, listen, here's the empirical formula. You don't even have to find it. I'm just telling you what it is. There's the empirical formula, and this is the um, mass of the sample that I have. So the first thing I need to do is find that molecular mass of the um, empirical formula. So we're going to write that out. So if you look back at your notes later, you'll know where this number came from. Always good practice for beginning chemistry students. There are two phosphoruses, five oxygens. Phosphorus is 30.97 grams per mole. Oxygen is 16 grams per mole. Now, I know good and well a lot of you are probably just punching that mass in your calculator really quickly, and that's fine. Um, if you're to that point and can do it, no problem. So 61.94. And 16 times 5 is 80. We're going to add those two numbers together. And we get 141.94. So that is the molar mass of the empirical formula. Now what we're going to do, and I'm actually going to write this down. I think I have it later in the um, lesson, but I'm just going to write it here as well. We are going to divide the molecular molar mass And I'm going to make a note that was given. They gave that to us in the problem. Divided by the mass of the empirical formula. That's what we find. Basically, you're dividing the big number that they give you by the smaller number you find. And think about that for a second. That should make sense because if our goal here is to get a small whole number, it makes sense the bigger number is going to be on the top. And that bigger number is always going to be this number that they give you in the formula. Your empirical formula of mass will always be smaller than that. So we are dividing the mass they gave us in the problem, which happens to be 283. 0.88 grams per mole by the mass of the empirical formula that we found. That's 141.94 grams per mole, big number divided by little number. And when we divide 283, and we know this should be 2, the OCD in me just has to punch it in, Just checking myself for mistakes. Yes, it is a two. So what are we going to do with this two? Travis Johnson, call the office. Travis Johnson, call the office, please. Again, folks, keeping it real. Um, we're going to have announcements and all kinds of things. So um, we're going to take this two, and we are going to multiply it by the subscripts in this empirical formula. So I'm just going to show that here. The empirical formula was P. 205. We're going to take this 2 and we're going to multiply it there. We're going to multiply it there. Again, we're multiplying and we get P4010. So this is the molecular formula for this empirical formula. And you always know you're right if these will reduce to this. So this is the molecular formula.
Think about the molecular formula as the multiple of the empirical formula. So really, in a nutshell, that's a lot of writing, a lot of talking about something that's real easy and quick. You are going to divide the experimental or molecular molar mass they give you by the mass of the empirical formula that you find yourself. It's very quick and easy. You're going to get a small whole number. You take that number and you multiply it by all the subscripts in the empirical formula. And that's it. So I think I have one more example for you. I do, and this is one I'd like you to try on your own if you haven't done that yet and just see if you can get it. So go ahead and pause the video and write this one down as well. A compound has an empirical formula of NO2. Given a molecular molar mass of 138.03, what is the molecular formula? Basically, they're saying, what's the multiple of that? What number do you have to use to multiply here and here to get the molecular formula. So let's go ahead and do it, and I bet those of you that tried it got it right. So let's do the mass of NO2 first. Okay, so that's going to be 14.01 plus 32.0, 46.01, when you add them together, grams per mole. That is the molar mass of the empirical formula that they gave me. And now all I'm going to do is take the experimental molar mass from the problem, which was 138 0.03 grams per mole divided by 46.01 grams per mole. Big number divided by little number. If, if you don't have the larger number on top, there's something wrong. You may want to check your math on your empirical mass, or maybe you've just picked up the wrong number. But that is a surefire way to know if you've done it right. 138.03 divided by 40. 6.01 is 3. This is our multiple, and we are going to take this 3, and we are going to multiply it by the subscripts in our empirical formula. We're going to multiply it by that 1. We're going to multiply it by that 2. So the molecular formula for this empirical formula is N3O6. And there you go. That's all you do. So that is how we find empirical formulas. I'm sorry, molecular formulas. We've already learned how to find empirical. So again, just to review a little, these empirical formulas, this is what we learned to find from percentages. To find these, we had to have percentages. We went from percent to gram, gram to mole, divide by the smallest, got the empirical formula, the most simple formula. That was one lesson. On today's lesson, they just gave us that. And we used the mass of this to find our multiple to write our molecular formula. Now you're gonna have one more video on this and honestly, this is gonna be the most important because this is where we're gonna be putting the two skills together. You're gonna to find this and then use this to find this. And in the real world and in college, this is the type of calculation that you're really gonna know how, how to do. So I've broken it down into smaller pieces, but the next one that you watch, the combination that's the one that you really need to be paying attention to. And you'll see it's just as easy. You're just doing two simple problems and putting them together.